Well, hey there, it's Sandy Alnock in for Ellen Hudson, and actually I'm here for Altenew as well, because Altenew is celebrating an anniversary, and I get to celebrate on Ellen's blog and YouTube channel. So I'm going to be talking about watercolor pencil versus watercolor today. When might you want to use one or the other, because I used both on my project. And I'm using the book engraving stamp set. It's a layering stamp, which I'll only be using the outlines for, and there's also dies and stencils that go with this one if you choose to get all of them because some of you guys are matchy matchy like that but I'm just the outline person I just want to color things in myself so I'm joining some of the stamp areas that didn't connect really well I didn't worry about my masking too much because I knew I was just going to take a sharpie which is waterproof and fill it in this is stamped with a VersaFine onyx black ink on watercolor paper some cold press from arches and these are the pencils I'll be using. These are woodless watercolor pencils, which means there's no wood. You're getting full pigment inside of those. And this is the swatching that I did of the colors. If you'd like to see the swatching thereof and my discussion of the colors, both the pencils and the watercolors, that's over on my YouTube channel. I had uh, done that just this past week. So you can check that out and uh, see how I did those. But for the flowers I'm going to be coloring, I'm going to do these in the watercolor pencil. For things that are more controlled, it's sometimes more fun to use a watercolor pencil where you get to apply the color exactly where you want it. I wanted the light on my flowers to come from the upper right. I didn't want to mess with a whole bunch of bleeding all over the place. So watercolor pencil made really good sense here. And it gives you the hand control of like knowing I know how to write with a pencil. I don't know how to control a brush but I can control a pencil watercolor pencils are a really good option and I found these to be my favorite out of the all to new products that I've tried um, they're they're really bright colors they're really intense and I do like the fact that they're woodless because I like getting a lot of pigment for my money when I get art supplies so that's a nice thing and and they're just they melt really well. That's a, a really crucial thing for me is a pencil that's going to turn into watercolor real easily. There's some where you have to just scrub back and forth or it has to be on the right paper or all different kinds of things. This just works wonderfully. And I'm heat setting this first pass after I, I added all the water and started you know painting it in and then added another layer. With watercolor pencils, you can usually, with most brands, you can just go right over top, wait until it's dry. You don't want to do it while it's wet. Well, there's some techniques you can do while it's wet, but if you want it to melt out again, then you want to wait for it to be completely dry. And then you can add more colors. So I'm going to add more deeper shadows. I didn't kind of color in that center section. There's little doodly bobs and a little red area underneath of them. I wanted more shadows in my shadow side of the flower, that kind of thing. And then I want to put the black center in there as well. So you can keep adding to it, just let it dry in between and, and put layer upon layer over it. I'll show you one of the pairs of leaves as well. I used two greens. One is a very desaturated, meaning it kind of grayed out sort of green. It's a moss green. And then this bright green for the highlight section. So I'm gonna let the two of them, even though normally you would think those would never blend together, I'm gonna let the grayed out kind of color contaminate the bright green and let the bright green brighten up the dark green that, so that I get something in between and the color looks very natural on it, but I have a strong highlight and shadow. And I will zip through the portion of doing all the rest of the flowers and leaves because they're all basically the same. And I wanted to keep this portion real time for you so you could see how long it takes to paint a flower. You may want to stamp fewer flowers on yours. My paper is a little bigger than a card front size, so I am going to be trimming some off. But next up is the background. And for backgrounds, generally it's going to be easier to use your watercolor paints. And I'm still using a number eight silver black velvet brush, my favorite watercolor brush for crafting. I was thinking about switching to the number 12 because I have a, all that open space out on the right hand side. But as long as I keep a lot of water moving, then I can still do this with the number eight brush. If you've got a big area, I, I generally try to switch to a bigger brush because it's just going to do you better. 
but I had all these little areas in between the flowers and I wanted to have some control over those so I didn't feel like reaching over to grab my other brush and I know it's just reaching across the table I am lazy I will just tell you that right now <laughs> so I kept my little brush but what I wanted to do was see how long these paints take to dry because I'm new to these wanted to see how long they take to dry and it took forever to dry the good thing about that though means that I could keep working on this background and what I wanted was for the background and the flowers to just feel like it was a garden, like it was all together, as opposed to flowers sitting in front of a, a background. So I wanted to add more of the darker reds and the oranges around the flowers. And as long as all the rest of that paint is wet, I could keep dropping in color and I wouldn't get any weird hard edges. Well, got a weird hard edge there, but there's enough moisture in the paper. I can very easily paint around that and start to soften all of that. Because these paints take a long time to dry. They're not like my artist paints that, you know, they they drive me crazy sometimes when they dry on me and I'm like, "No, I wasn't done with that yet." So, this is that's one of the benefits of these. They also have the same kind of super bright colors as the pencils. So, it's all in that Altenew color family. They've got all their products kind of aligned that way. And the more color I put around the flowers, look at how these white edges of a few of these flowers start to become more white because they've got a little more color around them. That's one reason why I'm trying to go back in here. I'm also going back into the flowers themselves to add some orange because there was no matching orange pencil in the, the pencil set. So I could go back in with watercolor. You can go back and forth and mix these two quite nicely. And especially when you've got a coordinating set between somebody like Altenu, all their colors are going to go together. So if you are interested in seeing more of the blog hop, link in the doobly-doo over to Ellen's. There's also an unboxing and swatching of both of these sets over on my channel from this past week. And I'll link you to that in the doobly-doo as well. And I will see you again soon. You take care and go make something beautiful, but not until after you go to the hop and celebrate with Altenu. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.